Okay, so there's this like projecting intent thing, mm-hmm. I guess, that you wanted to you yeah. know, unpack there. Yeah, so somebody, the couple's fighting, Some it doesn't really matter. It could be anyone, it, it, um, but I'm picking a couple right now. You always and, pick couples. Yeah, That's well, right. they're in therapy. So. I know, I, you just do a lot of couples therapy. Um, but they, somebody will be like, um, and th- this does happen individually, but it'll be somebody be like, oh my gosh, you know, I know exactly why too, because you know what, that what they, they ultimately don't like me. So, I mean, and they're trying to figure out some other way. And so now they're, and what they, why they said that was because blah, blah, blah. And really they don't know why they said that. Mm-hmm. They don't know anything of why they said that. So it's kind of that idea of like the intent of whatever was going on. They are, they're assuming the other person's intent. Right. It's like the thing where somebody says like, you don't care about me. And right. it's like, oh, it's not just a behavior happen. It's also, and that means you don't care about me. Right. So where do you want to go with that? Um, don't do that. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. So this will be like a three minute episode. <laughs> Welcome to the Dreaming Podcast. <laughs> don't do this. Have a good day. <laughs> Have a great day. Uh, great day. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I'm just prompting us. I think that we can spin off this thing a hundred different ways. I don't want to say it all now to everybody on YouTube before we get there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll just roll that. So, um, well, I think the general theme is when you're, when, just because it's like you're taking your belief system and putting it on the other person, you actually, it's all your own fear state, really. You're saying, mm-hmm. um, I'm afraid that this is happening to me and this is why I think it's happening now. Mm-hmm. And you're just telling, you're just basically putting it over there. But the problem is that's where we have that shirt on shrink thing, dot com forward slash line that says they're not attacking you, they're defending themselves. I see. Mm -hmm. So everybody feels attacked, but I would say the majority of the time, vast majority is they're not attacking. Right. They think you're attacking. Right, it's that idea of um, people, what is it this guy said in that group years ago, people don't do things to me, they do things for themselves. Yeah. They're not doing something to me. We're just a big ball of narcissists. Exactly. (laughs) Egocentric. All right, you ready? Yeah. Let's kick it off. I think I can kick it off. Mm-hmm. I won't take it off because we're on YouTube. Awkward. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Shrink Think Podcast. We've got another riveting episode today. Hopefully, it's going to be exciting and uh, you'll probably get offended because after our last episode, <laughs> we're assuming everyone's offended about everything by now. <laughs> right. Um, we've got a subject today uh, that I guess comes kind of in the context of relationships that this kind of dynamic that happens in relationships pretty frequently where somebody will do something or some event has happened and in reaction we like get upset about it and then project the intent onto the other person or or we assume that this is why the other person did the thing and that forms our conclusion about the whole thing and about the other person like you don't love me because blah 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 Mm -hmm. right yeah Um, And now we're like in this just crazy pillow fight about like, okay, how do you (laughs) like, how do you contain all of those feathers, right? Like it's at, they've left the, they've left the bag. So we're going to try to contain it and hopefully prevent that kind of a situation and really unpack like what's going on and what do you do about it? So first of all, Nathan, why don't you kick us off with like, what, like what's going on? What would you say you do here? (laughs) Yeah, I think where I came up with this topic is I was having a conversation with a client and realizing as they were talking that they don't know, they are assuming all kinds of things about what's going on. And so so one of the things that happens when you work with couples and then you see individuals um, for, you have to get the both sides, right? And you have to understand what's going on. And this is worse for me when, I've seen like one person two or three times and then I see the other person two or three times, you know? So after seeing them two or three times, you're like, bro, I get it. This other person. Wow. I mean, there's no way that like you have to, at least in my mind, you have to at least be right about these things. Like, like it's totally true that like, you know, cause it makes sense. All this stuff makes sense. The logic makes sense. Everything's going on. And, and I'm uh, done this long enough that now I don't believe any of that. <laughs> right. It's um, like- <laughs> and it's funny, you're right, as they're telling me that, I'm thinking about like, what could they be doing on the other side that you're not seeing 
like, huh, I wonder if the other person is actually doing this and you're taking it the wrong way. Yeah, it's probably it's possible. Right. You know? Right. But but honestly, the way I got to this place is is through experience of just of some of what I'm going to share now. But you in the beginning, you, you get this thing. You're like, oh, my gosh, it's got to be this way. The other person comes in and they're saying things and they're normal. They're like a cogent, well, think, good thinking person, meaning like they they don't have, they're not weird by anybody's standards. Um, and they have an entirely different version of what's going on. I mean, a wholly different version to where you're like, oh my gosh. And then you're starting to realize, okay, so actually you, that does make sense. And now you see both. And now you're like, I see, I can kind of see the problem in these interactions, which is why you do that to try to understand what's going on. So each person has the freedom to say everything without getting in a fight right in front of you. Although sometimes you do need to see that. That's another situation. So what people, what I notice though, is that people will become afraid for their own self somehow, whatever's going on. They'll be um, hurt usually. And then they try to understand what that fear is immediately. Um, and, and that understanding, by the way, is split second. This is not like, let me think about that right now. Okay, wait a minute. I need to react to you in a few minutes, so I'm going to need you to slow down. None of that happens. Um, there is an automatic like uh, projection of intent to the other person. The, you automatically believe what their intent is justifies your own fear. In other words, because I feel this way, the other person must have done this. That makes sense to me. And that also justifies my fear. Yes. So I'm trying to think on my feet here of kind of an example. Um, I would, so somebody, it, it's like, this is probably too direct, but people will say stuff like, I know why they did that. Why they did it is because, you know, ultimately they think that I blah, 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 blah. And so they want me to know X, Y, Z. You know, they, they have, because they, you know, you take a little bit of belief that the person actually does have. So whoever's the, the offender, I guess, in this situation, and they really do have that belief. And then you, then the person extrapolates that entire thing and then starts talking about how this has got to be what, that's, this is their motive for saying this to me. What I find is that, I mean, I it's got to be 100% of the time that you start to understand the other person and you find out, no, you're wrong. There is elements that you're right about, but you're wrong enough that it's, that's not even what they're saying. Their motive is totally different. Um, it's kind of like that, that whole thing with the paradox of parts that I've talked before. I'm not going to go into it right now, but, um, the other piece, of this pie, when it comes to the, the motive and that kind of thing, the fear is that it's your, it's your own fear. And the problem that, <laughs> that I have, I don't know if you have this in therapy is when somebody really believes that intent and I'm sitting there as a therapist, hearing the other person, knowing that they really don't like th this other person is not being heard. Um, and they are frustrated because now they're not allowed to have the motive that they have because the other person's so defended upon it because they're so scared of how they were hurt. They can't even hear it. They don't even want to hear it. And, and we've got this division that's occurred. And, and now the irony of it is, as I try to help the other person get hurt, it, it sometimes can, can go as far as the, of the, the client that's hurting will think that I am taking the side of the other person. Just the mere action of me trying to help that voice come out, it's like, wait, how can you entertain that there's an alternative? Don't you realize what he, he said X or she said this, she, there can't possibly be any explanation for it. The mere action of this, this came out can only mean this one thing. And so, and, and it's, I don't know if you've ever been in that whole situation, but it is um, lame. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I get quite as extreme of uh, uh, reactions from people like that. But I think I would get the uh, like the, it only means this one thing. That's like a really rigid, you know, perception or whatever. But I'll get a lot of people saying like um, they don't love me or they don't care about me. You know, they did this thing and that means they don't love me or don't care about me. And it's really difficult for them to see that. No, it might just mean that the other person just wasn't paying attention or the other person is like oblivious or the other person just has a different style or a different preference it doesn't mean that they don't care about you 
I would say it, it means that they're not caring about you in the way that you want them to care about you. Right. And that's where the hurt comes from. So I think there's a big difference between hurt and fear because hurt can certainly take that and you can feel it and magnify it. But I think fear then adds all of these other elements that you're describing of like, um, it, it's it's not only that the other person did this to me, it's that they are also that monster from A Quiet Place. <laughs> that movie, you know, it's like, whatever, like the... I didn't see the movie. Oh yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a great, it's a great movie, but like, any sort of a monster movie where you're just, you know, afraid. That's it's not a human being that's sitting right, across from right, you, right? right who right. like did something and they're like, oh my god, I had no idea that that meant something to you. You know, I threw that away. I thought it didn't matter. And you're like, you don't love me, do you? How could you know that? Right. It's like, instead, it's like this person was like nefariously. You know what? I know how I can get to them. <laughs> <laughs> you need to see YouTube for Aaron's face right now. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's very sinister. Yeah. Yeah. I, either way, I think really what we're trying to get at here is like there is a reality that's happening and it's not based in how you're feeling. It's not based in your fear. It's not based in your hurt. And it's really difficult often for people to not take what they're feeling and then project it onto the other person and say, this thing must be happening because of that. Right. We have a natural, I mean, part of trying to understand how you feel is to understand your context, right? So, I mean, we do that all the time. I mean, we have uh, Peter Levine tuned us into this thing called the felt sense. You know, you're in the middle of freaking nowhere and um, you're walking and you're hiking in the forest and you all of a sudden just feel weird. And you have this, this weird thought, uh, not weird thought, but, but that maybe you're being watched or something. Because what you're trying to do with your felt sense is you're trying to understand what's going on in the forest. Maybe birds stopped, all of a sudden stuff stopped, there's a predator out there, and you just know it. And um, that's literally, that has, that, that has everything to do with the foundation of what we're trying to talk about right now. Because when you are hurt, when you are now going to try to find out why, and then you're gonna take all the words that the other person said, and then you're gonna put it into your personal hurt story of your entire life and go, yep, Right, I feel like that yep needs to be like a Indiana Jones whip. Which? <laughs> yep. <laughs> right? <laughs> just for just for dramatic effect. Yeah, and there's a part in that as well that when you were saying and you're uh, you're telling yourself a story out of this, it's like and the thing that is not happening in that is I'm if you slow that down a little bit and back it up, I'm hurt and then I'm not regulating myself or managing the hurt inside myself to get my emotional state to be calm, because once I'm calm, then I can move back into curiosity and openness, and I can ask questions of like, well, what were you really thinking, or what was really going on for you? And then, like you were saying earlier, the person or the people in your office that don't, that cannot hear anything else, right? Because they're so dysregulated. When you're so dysregulated, all you can see and think and hear is that like tiny little thing that you're so focused on, right? You can't see that there might be something else over here that's happening. Uh, outside of that little scope that is actually critical information to what's really going on. Right. And so as a little bit of a side note, um, because it does, it does intertwine with what we've been talking about. So what I do with a couple in that scenario is I have to help the person that is hurting regulate. They have to slow down. I'll say things like, okay, let's just slow down. Remember, you guys are a couple. You're, you care about each other or else you wouldn't be in here. There's somehow that that this care for back and forth is being misunderstood. I don't know how it is. I'm not sure what's going on, but I know that ultimately you're in here to try to connect. And right now you're feeling very disconnected. So let's just remember that we're ultimately trying to connect and slow down. And usually people will be like, okay, well, and they're open to kind of try to look at things a little bit different. And because we all have a story and we're all not dumb. Like, you know, like, there's a reason why we put things together a certain way. There's a reason why we understand things a certain way. We've gathered, we've had these experiences and gathered all this information and said, oh, this is how things work. We've drawn these conclusions and then created a story out of it. Now, obviously, none of this is conscious, but that's what all people do. Right. And, and as a, a little bit of another side note, intuition is built off of that. Your, your intuition is this really cool thing where it takes every single life experience that's relevant to whatever scenario you're in and just gives you a feeling. 
there's this book out there I read um, a couple years ago that's called Thinking Fast and Slow. Maybe I've talked about it here on the podcast before, but it describes these two systems of the brain. And the first one is the intuition. It's like gathering all of this information that is readily available to us by our senses, and it's gathering it right quick, right? You don't think about it, it's not conscious, that's the fast way of thinking. And we can make decisions off of that, and oftentimes we are. We're like adjusting and reacting and responding, we're like navigating the world based off of the information that's coming to us outside of our conscious awareness, right? We're not conscious of all this stuff. We're just reacting and just moving like, okay, I need to step to the side or, oh, I need to step onto the train, you know, that kind of stuff. And then there's a second system that is much slower that's based off of that information, but that is a lot more conscious and it's a lot more executive functioning and it's a lot more deliberated, right? And that one is where we tend to make our big decisions from because you got to think things through. And if you think about that, that's like a heavy intentional process, right? So what you're describing is like all of that stuff that in that first system is where we're making decisions a lot. And, and it's really valuable because we are gathering information. It is based on something. We just might not know exactly what it is yet until we can pinpoint it. Right. And, and what happens in those scenarios of the hurt is we, we just take the leap. Right. We just take the leap. This is this is this is what's happening because it fits as part of our story. But the thing too about that is it's it's not so what I'm describing here in this thinking fast and slow example is that we're gathering information accurately and then responding accurately. Okay, that's when we are regulated. When you are dysregulated, like you're afraid or you're upset, you're hurt, what's happening then is your fight or flight system is kicked in. And you are now perceiving things as a threat that may not be a threat. So you are not gathering the, you, you might be mm-hmm. gathering all of that uh, intuitive information, but your interpretations of it are no longer that, oh, that's this, and oh, that's that over there, and this is this thing over here. Instead, you're gathering it as like, oh, he wants to kill me. Oh, he wants, he hates me. Oh, now he really like thinks that I'm an idiot. <laughs> you know, like you're projecting all this stuff because it's coming from this fear state, and you're, you are not accurately assessing what's going on and notice notice then like when you said that just i want to highlight you you are now realizing that oh this person hates you this person doesn't like you this person wants to murder you murder your soul type of thing <laughs> <laughs> like, like, i hope you're not <laughs> if you have that thought like, will you actually please contact us i would love to like have a conversation be like what would lead somebody to think you're murdering my soul? <laughs> well, maybe they have a hatchet while they're cutting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how you would do that. Anyway, anyway. So. <laughs> Sometimes I get extreme. <laughs> That's kind of a paradoxical thing to say, actually, right there. Um, but I, what, the reason why I wanted to slow it down is because, um, like, okay, so it, I'm. this is a shameless plug shrinkthink.myshopify.com. We have a shirt that says they're not attacking you, they're defending themselves because of exactly what you're talking about. This idea that if you are feeling attacked, so when somebody's going off on you, entertain this fact. They actually think you're attacking them. Mm -hmm. That's why they're doing that. They think that you are the one that's coming after them. And when you when you really rest in that in that moment, um, it's it changes things. It's it gets kind of weird. I mean, I um, because you know therapist, um, and I, this is something that you know you kind of learn and know and, and see over time. And, and honestly, as a as a bit of another side note, um, we don't learn all this stuff in school. Like um, we don't as therapists, you you learn basically how to embody therapy that's helpful to another human. And that's you, it. In that, and that's it. And then you're unleashed and like, go help these people. <laughs> right. <like>, what? <laughs> and so, How am I qualified? And so as you, as you learn and grow um, over the course of time, you run into situations and you're like, oh, that's what they're talking Oh my gosh. That's what they're saying. And so this actually helps all, all of my relationships. I mean, like I've grown um, because of this job, uh, uh, really, like in, in all these different ways. And so... <laughs> I will, you know, and, and I say that to say, um, in my personal relationships, I try to do what I'm telling you right now, and it's hard. 
it's hard. So and you even know, right? You like you've seen it in front of you. You have all this experience with other people, and I'm sure that in those moments of your personal relationships, you can be even consciously thinking about, okay, this is a scenario where this person is not attacking me; they're defending themselves, and I I can replay the clients that have gone in my head where it's like, okay, I, I can see that, I can know it, and yet you still have the propensity to like want to like defend yourself. Yes. Like to get offended, to react, to like take it as fear and to project all that stuff. And you have to like, no, stop. Yeah, it's hard. I, you're right. They, I do, I do have the other thing in my head going like, it's happening now. Slow down. <laughs> nope. You, have, you feel the adrenaline. Oh, you feel it, don't you? Oh, that's right. Because they're still keeping going. They're keeping going. You know, they just need to stop. That's what they need to do. You know, so then right. you just go. But, um, but I want you to feel okay about the fact that this is a process that I, I think we're trying to invite you in to, to entertain and do different. And um, that's why you need to buy the shirt. Just kidding. <laughs> that, that was a little ridiculous. I actually really like that phrase though, do different, right? Because it's this idea that, and I think about this all the time from a neural pathway standpoint, meaning, you know, in our brains, we've got this neural pathway, like a whole, like just a ton of neural pathways that are built, right? The trillions. Ways, trillions, the ways that we think, the ways that we believe and feel and do. And so this has been, you know, talking about our story, a well-worn pathway. It's been reinforced over and over and over. And what we're saying is it's not actually accurate or it's based off of past information that's no longer accurate or up to date. And so it needs to get up to date, right? Meaning I need to do different. And so from that neural pathway standpoint, I need to actually think differently, feel differently, not do what I always do, not assume intent or project intent. And that means I'm doing something differently than what I've always done in order to change that pattern and build a new pathway towards growth and something healthier. Right. You can't, you just, we're just inviting you take, take some opportunity, realize that you're probably not being attacked. They actually are trying to defend themselves and all the motivation that you're ascribing to them, um, you might be, you're, you're probably somewhat right actually, let's just go there, but but you're, you're wrong enough that it's actually not helpful for you. Yeah, and let me say this, um, because I've, I've been in these situations too with many, many, many people where it's fascinating, let me tell you, it's fascinating to watch because there's a moment at which when you can uh, safely unpack both sides, you can start to see the full context of what actually happened from a very, very objective standpoint. And it's amazing to me that as a third party objective person, I can see how, um, I can see both sides, right? It makes sense. The person is defending themselves and yet the other person feels like they were being attacked. So I put that in this physical example where one person, when they're defending themselves, it's like they're crossing their hands at their wrist in front of them and they're like defending themselves, right? In their mind, all they're doing is like turning away and defending themselves to the other person. The experience is you're pushing me, you're shoving me, right? And both are true. It can feel like you're only defending yourself, but in reality, you might actually be putting more force on the other person, which comes across like an attack. Or it's the same thing in basketball. Like if you're going, if you're defending somebody, you think that your arms are straight up, but nope, your arms are like, <laughs> like in your face straight out. <laughs> you got laser, laser hands. Exactly. <laughs> oh, so anyway, Lord. all that's to say, like, um, you can't trust what that what you're feeling. You gotta regulate yourself and be open to there might be more going on than you realize. And as we always say, um, this is just for educational purposes. We're not your therapist. This is not psychological advice, um, but just take this and hopefully it's helpful to you. Yeah, with all that, I don't think there's anything else to say except have a great day. Ooh, that even rhymed. Yeah, there's the, nothing to say. You know what have I thought, a great day. You know what I thought of when you're saying that? There's a, that movie, um, uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, mm -hmm. John Candy and Steve Martin, mm -hmm. and... Uh, they, they got into a whole thing where the car explodes or because you were talking about like, hey, this is the only thing that's happening and we can reflect and it's a fascinating moment. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think all of this trouble happens and then they get drunk one night and they and they're like talking about it and they're laughing about it. And, he, and John Candy says like, yeah, and this is only like an hour previous. You mm -hmm. know? He's like, well, we can laugh about it now. And Steve Martin looks over and I'm like, what the like you are not reading the room like i'm not ready to laugh about it at all like so you, there's i guess what, what and it would have been a totally different direction obviously but i was thinking you know 
there may be actually something to this idea of like, when do you try to move on? Mm. Like, um, anyways, I felt like anyway. oh, that, that relates, but mm. random. But, yeah. But, I, but I'm saying it now. <laughs> and it's recorded, so maybe in the future we'll get to it. Yeah.